How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today's video is going to be all about viewing JSON in the browser as a developer. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you a couple of ways uh, you can make this look nicer and easier to work with. That's going to be done using a Chrome extension. I'll get to that shortly, but I'm also going to be uh, chatting about uh, the response headers and how the browser is going to uh, be able to pick up whether or not your data being sent back is JSON. So that's actually quite an important topic. Uh, not just for JSON but also across the board if you're building APIs and things like that. So what we have here is we have a simple API server. This is actually from one of my previous videos where I build a mock data API using uh, Express.js but the point is this here is an endpoint which returns JSON data. Now I want to first have a chat about the response headers, okay? Because what's happening here is the API server is responding back with the response and it contains the JSON string, okay? This raw JSON string. It then needs to be picked up by the browser and if you have an extension installed or your browser natively supports it, it's gonna parse that string and present it to you like this, again, if you have no extension installed, then you may just get this raw message. Um, otherwise you get this parsed nice format with this expandable and so on. But the point is, yeah, you get that data back, but you've also got a response header on that response, which indicates to the browser that this here is JSON. Let's have a look. So if I go into the network tab, inside the doc section, if I click on this request right here, under the headers section, we have this response headers uh, collection here. Now, the content type is application forward slash JSON. This tells whoever's making the request what the actual data is, what data type is coming back. The same goes for images, image slash JPEG, image slash PNG, right? That tells the browser what data is being sent back. Now, if you are using uh, API framework or library to build your API, or if you're using Nginx or Apache or uh, whatever it might be, that content type is likely going to be inferred or specified somewhere by the library. Okay, let's have a look at the Node.js example using Express, okay? This is the code for what I just showed you, this uh, employees list API response, right? So we can see here, I'm using response.json. In Express, if you use .json, it's gonna take your data, it's gonna respond with it, but also set that content type to application forward slash JSON. I've also found that if you say response.send and you pass an object in or an array in, in this case, right? Refresh the browser and we still get application slash. Now I'm going to force it to be response.type. I'm going to say text plane, okay? I'm going to force it to be uh, the text plane content type, okay? Save this back in the browser, refresh, click on the response. We can see the actual icon has changed here. And also my extension no longer says pretty print in the top left corner. I'm not sure why, but the point is things have changed right? The icon's different. This is different. If I click on the response, we get text forward slash plain. Now, text plain is used for things like text files, right? So in this case, the extension is smart enough to understand that this is still a JSON string. So it parses it anyway, and it shows uh, me the JSON like this, luckily, right? Um, but that may not always be the case. Okay, so it's important to set your response headers correctly. In this case, of course, JSON. Now, before jumping to the Chrome extension, which I'm using for this video or that I've been using for a long time, I wanna have a look at Firefox, okay? Let's go into Firefox right here and we get this raw JSON string. There is no formatting that has been applied to it, but Firefox has a built-in JSON formatter. It's going to essentially do the task of this extension for Chrome uh, natively, which is great, right? So if I go back inside VS Code, if I now get rid of this explicit text plane and I make this back to JSON, Firefox is now gonna know that this response is JSON and it's gonna 
format it nicely for us to scroll through. Okay, so if you are a Firefox user, you're in luck. This happens uh, natively. You get this nice JSON format. If you're on Chrome or a browser which doesn't support it, uh, I recommend installing this one here, JSON Formatter. I've been using this for quite a long time. It's got 2 million uh, users and you should get these nicely formatted uh, JSON responses. As we can see, you're able to switch between raw and parsed. I think most times you just want the parsed version. We can see that you're able to expand or, uh, uh, what do you call it, expand or collapse your objects. Um, it's also going to make your integers and I believe your booleans blue text as opposed to your strings with, of course, the green text. So yeah, it makes it a lot clearer to um, to read. But I guess, yeah, the main point of this video was to just talk about those response headers. I've had uh, many situations in the past uh, during API development where, yeah, things have not worked out as you know, I expected them to because of that incorrect response header. So that is all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.